welcome to my new video series where um, we'll be over this uh, three to four episode part mini series, I guess. We'll be detailing some stock from a train set. Well, a simple starter train set, and this is just like detailing for beginners, I guess. So you're just a new lad in the hobby. You don't need all this other stuff. You've watched a bit of budget model railways or um O O'Neill, maybe. And to get some modelling tips from other people and the such. But what I've been noticing, no one's really I, I from what I've seen, no one's really done a video where they just go over simple detailing um bits and whatevers on just normal stock you can get for a train set. Now this varies about what train set you get, but I'm talking about a starter train set. So like a little 040, a few wagons, and your little small oval with the crappy track mat and all this other garbage in the box. So when it comes to um, detailing models, you could either have a simple repaint like, well, these two here. This guy was almost a non-runner, but I got him fixed. And all I've done here is add some new buffers, painted up the shanks, uh, did the smoke box dart with a bit of a toothpick, uh, also the handrails. But then the next step up is adding more paint, like painting the coupling rods and doing white rimmed wheels, or painting the soul bar into a different, well, the same colour as the body, and even doing hazard stripes and such. That's just for simple repaints. Sometimes you might just do a simple transfer, like water slide decals and stuff. This ain't my model, but I got it for Christmas. It's a Smoky Joe, but with the British Railway's early crest and renumbered to 56011. Now, 56011, from what I remember, uh, didn't look like this. This is just a random number the guy picked. Um, 56011 was much more different than just a simple pocket rocket, but this guy did exist as the Caledonian 264 or the British Railway 611. You should research on it and I think more people should do some more videos on it. There's a nice video by uh, one chap who did it recently around Christmas time. I cannot remember his channel name because he's just got his use his actual name as his channel name but I will put a picture of it somewhere. It's called Smokey Joe with the Basics or something. But we're talking about models here and just detailing train sets. You could either start off with just a normal O for O. Well, we'll take Percy here because he's my only spare engine I've got that's identical to another one. Here is just Percy, and then here's the per current Percy I use. These guys I got together, but this guy was a bit more extreme because I actually had to repair him in bodywork and just maintenance. As you can tell here, there's been a, there's a crack along here because when I found him on eBay. Someone had just cracked him like an egg, and like, his front here was broken, so I had to glue him back together. Don't worry about this bit, this bit's gonna come off for servicing, I think, so you could lubricate the worm gear. It's very difficult to get off though. But yeah, that's a repair job and a repaint and different parts and bits added to it. Like a lamp, lamp irons, and uh, new step ladders as well, because the original ones, I couldn't like, snick any off off an old model because they wouldn't match so I had to just custom make some out of bits of card because I don't use plastic card or all that fancy stuff I just like to use bits of uh, paperboard and card and all that it's not very good material but it's what I have on hand or even you just want to go full like scratch build something this is Diagostini Toby that's been uh, very modified. It's had. Uh, I call these the pantries. The, the pantries cut open. So there's just like a grey. Vo what? Grey. Black void that just sits here. Uh, Paperclip handrails and this pipe here. That's a thicker. Actually, that's, that's a bit of a rivet. A pop rivet. That's a funnel from the D Class Loco, as I showed you at the beginning. And that, these lamp bulbs, they're from a. Uh, piece of plastic gem stuff and that's just sit sitting on a cut down 
O for O chassis. But that's just a few examples of what I do. And it doesn't have to always be engines. You could do some repainting of some wagons, like, uh, uh... Yeah, this is my TTA tanker. This red is very slow at drying. It's still drying after like two days. It's meant to be outdoor paint. I don't think I stirred it properly. But yeah, this is a TTA tanker. These come in like a lot of Hornby stuff. And no one really paints them up. They just leave the chassis uh, plain. They don't paint the axe, the roll bearings, yellow. Or well, axle boxes, I can't remember. I get confused. And the sole bar, they just leave it black as well. But I've painted that whole thing red, along with the buffer beams. But we're not talking about the tankers here. Um, we're talking about train set stock. So, let's bring it closer. Here's Blue Diamond from, from the Devon Fly train set. I actually got this set for a really good deal at this strange place that's opening up near my college. It, it looked to be like a tattoo parlor, maybe? But they had some toys and vintage stuff for sale that apparently uh, the owners, two of them, their dad was selling off. But when I went to go pick it up, because I was walking down the town with my mates before class, because we had an hour early before class, um, as a joke, I thought, hey, what if I bought that and just brought it into class? It'd be funny just to have a train set with me for no reason. Very reckless spending. But it was my birthday money, man. And it was £40. So, and that's a good deal because I opened it up and everything was basically brand new. I haven't touched this controller at all. It's still in this plastic bag and there's a hair there from me. Ooh, there's hair all over it. That's from me, don't worry. Yeah, all the tissue paper is original. And it was what with all the stock until I took it out and gave it a ran in that um, announcement video. The rubber bands on the track, they're still here. Everything looks clean. Other than, I think, when I took out Blue Diamond, she looked like she came out of the box once and then got put back in the tissue paper. The box is a bit crumpled and stuff, but I guess it's been bashing around in the attic for a while. It's still got all the paperwork and the old catalogue. Uh, leaflets, this big old brochure leaflet, which is really nice, and I missed this. Uh, an owner's manual, actual instructions for servicing your loco. These are useful if you're a beginner. Follow these, but also follow what I do. I'm probably not going to show it in any of this series, but you know. And here's the simple track map. Every modeler doesn't really use these except. If you are a beginner modeler, you can base your layout off of this, like, layout, I guess. I've never really seen anyone, like, um, like, build exactly on top of this track map for their baseboard layout. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, I'm, not, I'm not good at words. <laughs> but I have plenty of these, and at this point I may as well just bin them, or just use them for art. I don't do art. I'm in college. I don't have that course anymore. But, you know. They're just house fillers if you have so many train sets over the years. But we're looking at Blue Diamond. Well, actually, the rolling stock she comes with. Before I actually get into models, here's the rest of my stuff if you're a newbie to the channel. Here's one of them D classes again, but we've added bits like lamp brackets and. Uh, scratchable brake pipe and a nameplate. Uh, this is kit bashed from a Lima shunter, cut up onto a Hornby 040 chassis. That's just a simple 06 I put on a new chassis. That's an 08. But this is my S69 from the Great Eastern Railway. But it's a mix between the B12 rebuild. So I like to imagine this is actually a B12, but well, mixed with an S69. So, when I do get the decals, I'm thinking of getting some LNER transfers. So I could put LNER on the tender and put an LNER number onto the body. Maybe I'll make this into a... Oh, what's a number? The, the only sole surviving B12 at the North Norfolk, her. I want to make her because she's actually going out of service right now. And she'll be um, getting an overhaul for five years, basically. And they're deciding a livery for her. So, I'd like to imagine... Maybe in 2020, 
uh, something, I can't remember, that shall come out in Great Eastern Blue. I think that would be pretty nice. But, you know, it's nice to imagine. Right, we're not talking about that, we're talking about my train set stuff. Now the wagons that came with the Devon Fly train set is you've got this little blue um, open wagon, which I really like, because it reminds me of... I, I think this was kind of loosely based off of the livery of the blue uh, wagon from uh, the Thomas range. Because I think that came out... I don't know. I think this set's older than the Great Discovery one, but I'm, 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 I'm having a brain fart here. Just pretend this is the Thomas one, but with uh, grey frames instead of black. So yeah, there's that. Here's here's what became, I think, I think it was the Troublesome Truck in the Thomas range. That was the first model. Like, Dar is the first model to all the Bagnall diesels in the Thomas range. Well, in, in the Hornby range, even. Um, so yeah, this was the, their Troublesome Truck model that they put on a, a coach chassis, so that's why it's got this silly step board here. Now, if this was a proper, like, rebuild of all this stuff, I would be cutting this off. Honestly. I'd cut this off. I don't have an example, but I think there's some people out there, like, uh... Matthew Snowden Shunter guy, who, on his Instagram, he's taken some of these wagons and cut off the step boards. So, or you could swap this out, actually, with the, uh, the long mineral wagon chassis. I've got one in a box, but I think... I'll go grab it, actually. I've just realised we're not going to have enough time to actually, um... <laughs> do any work today, but this is just a pilot. We're going to see... Uh, what we got here, and we talk a bit more about what to do. So, this is what I was talking about. This is the, uh, old Hornby Railway's mineral wagon. This is maybe like a, a loco coal... Um, I don't know, I'm making up things. <laughs> this is just a uh, mineral wagon. Yes, it is a mineral wagon, but like it's the long, the long wheelbase one, not the, s the small ones. So this chassis actually fits onto these, well, I'm going to call them the troublesome truck bodies. Um, and it would look much better, but these aren't a these aren't produced as much anymore as Hornby just uses these step board ones so trying to find some more of these and just replacing it with these it's not really worth it but if you want to do it then I'm not stopping you but yeah this is called the troublesome truck one because from what I've basically gathered up is that this hole here is for where the troublesome truck face would go let me, let me get an example this ain't a troublesome truck face in the Hornby range, but it'd sit there and it'd be like a little peg that'd go behind the face into that little circle on the, the plank, the door of the uh, truck. So yeah, and Hornby never removed that, so it's just a bit strange that you just got this weird hole in there and Hornby's never really addressed it or done anything with it and just uh, kept it as normal. When I was a child, I thought like that was somewhere something to put a lamp in. It's so, like you put a lamp in there, and then you have I, I don't know. It's very strange. And then here's the brake van. Now I actually have another one of these brake vans. I got got plenty of these specific brake vans, but with this specific one, with the number. Um. Yeah, here we go. Here's my other one. You might be able to tell some differences, not obvious differences, like the lamp and the painting but the same numbers 95 uh, 2010 on this one and then 95 2010 on this one as well they're both basically the same printing but uh, the font is slightly different so this one's more sharp and this one's like a bit more uh, bubbly I'd like to say like a bit more thicker uh, this one's actually unpainted, as you can tell from the light. This is just pure plastic on here. This one's been painted. This one's proper, like, bauxite painted. Uh, for this series, I'd like to just... Well, for our next episode, after I do this pilot, I'd like to um, 
first work on this brake van and paint it up like this. Let's have a similar result to this. Maybe not with this black uh, foot plate, I'm going to call it. Maybe we'll keep it uh, brown so I could tell them apart. But uh, yeah, that's really it. As a bonus for while I'm here talking about all this train set stock, maybe you'll need some tools and stuff for when you're starting out in modeling. So my essential tools personally is um, you will definitely need a set of screwdrivers. I use these two because they're my trusty ones. This is just a little, a little uh, crosshead from a, a budgety Meccano looking set. But it's got a nice grip to it. It, it feels nice because this head actually fits into a lot of my screws I use. It's not going to focus on camera because it's too small, but you know. And this one my, was my dad's. I just nicked out of the garage. And I just use it a lot. It's been covered in paint, as you can tell. Well, you could tell if it went out of focus. I've had to, like, sharpen this edge off because it went off, went round. Uh, another important tool is an oiler pen. Or what I use, which is a bit uh, industrial looking, but... And people are going to kill me for this, but you've got to be responsible with this. 3-in-1 oil. Budget Model Railways uses this. But I use a little, uh, like, tap. A little nozzle that comes off a packet of Poundland super glue, like packs, because they some of them in the plastic tubes, they come in a uh, they come with these little funnels, and I use a little drop of this on the worm gears and all that, and I also use a bit of Vaseline. I don't know if that's proper, it might melt the gears or whatever, but you know I'm risking it. It works well for me, and it silences the grindiness sometimes. Um. Yeah, an oiler pen is good for when you're oiling these locos. So, when you're properly oiling these, sometimes these chassis have a lot of play. Well, the wheels can judder about like that. I wouldn't recommend sticking the oiler pen down there because then you're going to get oil on the side of these, uh, the backs of the wheels, and that's going to hit onto your um, the contacts. And it's just going to oil over your contacts and it's... I mean, it's happened to me a few times and the loco still ran, but it's just not advisable. I'd rather strip this down or try and stick the oiler pen from the top here and try not to get some oil there. But these front ones are easier because it's more narrow. So there's a lot more space here. But here, it's better to just strip out the motor and then just oil it yourself straight onto the axle. Uh, what was I saying? I've gone on a tangent for 20 minutes. Um, a fiberglass pen or cotton buds and acetone. These are useful for cleaning wheels, not just on locos, but wagons too. Because other than locos, wagons pick up dirt from the track too. And you'll end up having a bumpy wagon that sounds very noisy and just awful. Oh, an oiler as well, I forgot to mention. Oiler pens and just lubrication is very important. Not but just for engines, but for wagons too. So you have smooth running. I usually like to oil the axle cups in the axle boxes of the wagon. So it runs as smooth as it can. And the hook... Let me think. And the little... Um, thing for where the hook just goes into because sometimes you get wagons where the hooks are stiff even after you've bent it out and like bent it straight as you can it still like gets stuck if an engine shunts into it and it just sticks up like that and doesn't hook onto your loco even though like when your loco hasn't got a hook itself uh what was i talking about yeah cleaning wheels that is important so you've got smooth running all over and uh a 9 volt battery is good for servicing too because you could just put this against the wheels and that turns your wheels so you could just get your fiberglass pen and clean the wheels so it, it depends on um loco sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not because sometimes you've got like a night 
let's just say an engine with a slower motor and it needs a lot of power to go very fast and it depends when your battery drains down um, it's not very fast enough to actually like keep power when you're trying to cl put some pressure onto the pencil onto the wheel it just stops so um, cleaning up pocket rockets is really easy because they go really fast and that's like a polishing effect with the fiberglass pencil. Um, one last thing which I find very important for servicing and stuff. Uh, oh, where'd it go? There it is. A track rubber. Or, if you want to, sandpaper. Um, track rubber, it, it just says it in the name. It just cleans your track of any dirt. I usually like to clean my track... Um, at the beginning of every running session because my layout's a little dodgy and um, doesn't like to run well so I usually go around and scrub the track a few times uh, using a fiberglass pencil is good too but it's like you wouldn't really want to go around the whole railway with just a, doing one rail at a time with a little pencil when you could do two rails at once with a track rubber uh, there are other ways to clean up your track because people say track rubbers aren't good they just leave uh, gunk and just rubble from itself onto the rails uh, this is all I just use it so far so when this is like just a cr little crumb I I'll, I'll switch to something else I do also use the acetone and a track cleaning pad to go over the rails as well to pick up any of the track rubber grime um, but also I I I'm, I'm bouncing back to the fiberglass pencil but this is useful for um, cleaning it between rails, like on level crossing bits, because a track rubber might just get caught on the road bits of your level crossing and it wouldn't get the rail at all. So getting your fiberglass pencil, just scrubbing it where the rails, along the, like, not just the top, but like on the sides as well, if you can. Um, they help a lot. I don't have it with me. But another tool that I just remembered for cleaning point work, uh, a little wire brush is nice to scrub against the blades because sometimes they get ganked up too and you don't really get enough power into the siding or whatever you're working on. So giving them a scrub and then cleaning up with the rubber and the fiberglass pencil, they're very good. This hasn't even gone on to detailing stuff, I've just been telling you what to do <laughs> of how to look after your model railway. There are other tips and tricks, and I'm not going to tell you all of them, because there are so many videos online of what you could do, like wagon loads and how to paint up wagons properly. But, yeah. Um, that's really it. So, hopefully in the new year, everything will be better again. I will be back at college again, so it's going to be another stressful life, but hopefully I can continue this mini-series and this pilot won't just be a standalone thing. So in the new year, we will be working on the brake van first, we'll painting the handrails and just doing little details to make it look uh, unique. Then we'll work on this little uh, troublesome truck. I'm not going to make wagon loads in this series because uh, everyone does them, but what I usually do is... I'm sorry I'm bouncing back and forth, but I get like these little bits of wood. These are for like a tiny Jenga block, uh, Jenga game set. I stick a bit of card on top, paint the card to whatever colour my load is, or whatever um, realistic earthy colour is. And then I just stick my load on, and then I'll put some more of my load onto it, like ballast or coal. And, uh,. I've got a nice wagon load and it weighs down the wagon a bit so it doesn't fly off the track. Oh! That bloomin' reminded me. One more tool. A back-to-back -to -back gauge. This is useful for if you're buying stuff second-hand. It depends on what wheels you have. Because if you have like big chunky uh, plastic wheels, some wheels are quite kind of like chunky. Uh, you don't need to use a back-to-back -back gauge if it doesn't derail as much. But this is for like wagons that derail a lot. So... Usually, you take your wheel out, and then you put it on the back-to-back -back gauge to, like, measure it about. 
like that. Well, out of the wagon, of course, but like that. And uh, you just widen it out so it touches the rail more and doesn't like fall in the rail, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I don't think people mention that much, that back-to-back -back gauges are really good for um, beginners on wagons. Pretty easy to use. And I think there's more videos about back-to-back -back gauges that you could follow on, so this is just a bit of a heads up. So uh, yeah, hopefully in the new year, finally, after I've stopped talking, we will um, get on with this actual mini-series. And hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a nice detailed uh, train set stock. I'm only doing this just because like the Hornby 040s that Hornby picks out are so bland looking and they all basically look the same. So I thought this video would be nice just to show you. You can make these look good other than just like the generic stock like this. Because everyone's going to realise, oh, it's blue diamond. Oh, it just looks the same. Oh, oh what's the point? <laughs> So, detailing makes your loco stand out from others. That's all I can say. So, for the fifth time in this video, thank you for watching. Hopefully in the new year, I will get on with this series. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye. Get out.